Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Clockwork Kitchen. I am here in Austin, Texas. It is bright, it is sunny, it is humid for February. So my hair is gonna start to go crazy soon, but I'm, I'm not complaining. Not for February, I'm not complaining. I'm here for a fun girls weekend and I thought I'd take some time to talk to you guys about meal planning. A lot of you have told me that you really struggle not just with like prepping your meals or planning your meals, but also just figuring out what on earth to cook in the first place before you can even prep and plan. And yes, sometimes it is really hard to figure out what to cook so that you don't feel like you're eating the same thing week after week after week because that gets really boring and then you want to go out to eat, try something new. You probably know the drill. Today I'm going to share three ways that I use to figure out what to cook and that way I don't get tired of what I'm eating and it's always really fun to make. So let's get into it. The first trick that I use to figure out what to cook is I have a repertoire of recipes that I know really, really well that I can go back to time and time again. And these recipes are really, really versatile so that I don't feel like I'm cooking the same thing over and over again. So one example is stir fries. You guys have probably heard me talk about stir fries a lot in my videos, and it's because I do cook them all the time. And you can make them in a lot of different ways. You could put them over noodles, you could put them over rice. If you do peanuts and some scallions and some fish sauce, you end up with a more Thai style stir fry. If you do rice wine vinegar, a little chili garlic sauce, some cashews, you end up more with a Chinese style. It's still the same skill set, so it's not like I'm completely relearning how to make an entirely new recipe but the recipe feels new because each time that I make the dish, it's a little bit different. I'm using slightly different vegetables, slightly different ingredients that I know work together, and it can all come together in a totally different dish. Another example is tacos or taco bowls if you don't actually want to do them on tortillas, but you could use flour tortillas or corn tortillas. You can mix up the protein that you're using, whether it's steak or chicken or tofu or portobellos. I mean, the list goes on and on. You can use different vegetables in there from onions to peppers to corn to whatever you have in your fridge. You could use different kinds of salsas. There's green salsas and red salsas, and you can make it taste completely differently depending on what you might have in your fridge or what it is that you'd like to cook. Another example of this is pasta. Obviously there are tons of different pasta shapes that you can use. You can use different meats, ground meat, or sliced chicken, or no meat at all. You could put a bunch of different, again, vegetables in that pasta. You can make different sauces from a little bit of red sauce to some pestos and pestos themselves. You can make pesto out of so many different kinds of things. I wanna make a video about this at some point, but pesto is on its own, extremely versatile. You can throw it on so many different things and you can make it with so many different ingredients that are not just just basil. So mix that up and you're still using the same skill set where you're throwing things into a blender and pouring that over pasta, which is just boiled in water. Another example is grain bowls. If you learn how to make rice well and some quinoa, then you can completely mix up what it is that you're putting on top of there. Again, you could saute up some chicken or some tofu, or you can saute up a lot of different kinds of vegetables. Grain bowls are just an amazing base for a lot of different meals. You could put different seasonings on there. You could put some taco seasoning and again, go a little more, you know, Mexican style, or you could put some chili lime and that'll maybe feel a little bit more Asian or I, you know, I definitely cook other things beyond that, but you can completely change the way that that, that dish tastes, but you're still using the same skill set. So again, it's not like you're learning a completely different thing, like you're starting off at square one and have to figure it all out. You kind of have the muscle memory and the knowledge of how to make this recipe. It's just the slightly different ingredients that you're using. And that way it won't feel like you're eating the same thing, but it's still really easy to plan for and to fall back on and to make no matter what you have in your fridge. The second method that I use to figure out what to cook is I build my meals around a specific ingredient. The first step in this process is to start collecting recipes. It's really hard if you haven't done this because then you try to go and meal plan and then you have to like sort of think, okay, let me rifle through what cookbooks I have or let me, let me go search online for like maybe something that looks good. It's just harder to do. It, it's easier if you start collecting these recipes in advance so that you have a catalog to pull from when the time comes. 
These recipes can either be things that you've made before and that you really, really like, or ones that you've seen and you think like, hmm, I wanna try to make that, store that for later use. You can do this just by having cookbooks and going through those, but I highly recommend having some sort of app or digital tool where you can store your recipes online as well. I use Evernote right now, but I haven't used it for too long because the app that I was using before recently switched to a paid plan and I just didn't want to do that. So I switched over to Evernote. Not quite sure how it's, you know, like I've only been using it for a little bit, so I don't have like a perfect review of it yet. But try to find an app that you can search ingredients through. I know a lot of people save recipes on Pinterest. I haven't found a way to search ingredients on Pinterest, so I don't necessarily recommend that way. Some sort of app where you can store your recipes and you can search by ingredient. So then when it comes time to meal plan, pick an ingredient that you want to center your meal around. This can be something that you have in the fridge that you haven't used up yet and you're just like, all right, let's make something with this. Or you go to the farmer's market, you pick out some fresh produce that you got really excited about and you're like, okay, what should I make with this? Or even if you're just like, you know what? I really, really want eggplant this week then you can find a recipe for eggplant and build around that. And you'll have this catalog of recipes that you can turn to, that you can easily search through, that you can say, okay, I've really been wanting to make this recipe right, I had completely forgotten about it, or just finding a recipe where you're like, yeah, I've made this before, but I haven't made it in a while, and it's really, really great, and I should make this this week. It'll remind you about things that you had flagged before, it'll jog your memory, and it's so much easier when you can search by that ingredient, find the recipe that you wanna make, then you go shopping for the recipe the ingredients in that recipe or figure out what you already have at home and bam you know what to make My last suggestion for figuring out what to cook is to identify recipe creators that you really, really like and trust. These can be chefs like Gordon Ramsay or Ina Garden, or they could be bloggers like Sprouted Kitchen or Smitten Kitchen, or even YouTubers that are putting out recipes. Anyone who is creating recipes that you really enjoy making, that you're inspired by, that you're excited to see what new recipes they come out with. There are a lot of recipes out there on the internet and in cookbooks around the world. And sometimes I've made these recipes and they just, they just don't excite me or they don't taste really good or they're just not exactly how I would wanna put something together or, or I don't really like their flavor combinations. So I have identified certain recipe creators that I really, really love that I know I can go back to time and time again. I can search through the archives of their, their blog or their channel and see what they've made before and still know that it's a solid thing that I'm gonna enjoy making and that I'm gonna enjoy eating. Another great thing about this is if they're active recipe creators, then you can check their space week after week and see what new recipes they've come out with and that could determine what you decide to make that week so you could follow along with them as they create new recipes. That's something that can be so fun and so exciting and can get you really, really excited to make those meals. So find those recipe creators that you really, really like and trust and go to them for meal inspiration, meal advice, meal tips. As with anything, practice makes perfect. Meal planning and figuring out what to cook are muscles that you have to exercise in order to get better at it. So I hope that these methods give you a jumping off point, but keep practicing, keep figuring out what to make, and I promise that over time, it's going to get easier. If one of those methods was helpful to you, I'd love to hear about it. Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, like, subscribe, hit the little bell icon to support my channel. And I'll see you next time on Clockwork Kitchen. Bye for now.